next uh, presentation is by Colonel Sandeep Gupta. He is going to speak on small pupil management to use iris capsule hooks or rings. Colonel Sandeep Gupta is a prolific uh, cataract, refractive, and uh, cornea surgeon. He has done his fellowship from, from RP Center, uh, Delhi, and he has loads of experience in cataract, refractive, and lamellar, and all types of uh, corneal surgeries. Colonel Sandeep Gupta, please. Thank you, sir, for this opportunity. Sir, is, there is no clear cut ans answer to what to use in small pupils. So if you see the roadmap, the things which are available are mediatric and NACI, NACI drops. Now, intracameral lidocaine with phenylephrine is available, but still you have situations where these things don't work. Then, then you have the choice of viscometriasis versus a mechanical stretching of the pupil, and the, then options which are available are iris hooks, and then you have pupillary expansion devices. So why we talk about small pupil? The reason is it is fairly common to have a small pupil in phagoemulsification. You have patients with pecs, the floppy iris syndrome, synechia, old age, people with, uh, on chronic neotics, they all come up with small pupils. And the problems are you have a lot of complications. Even in, even in people who are trained, people with, with even lots of experience, you can have a rexis extension. You may land up in a small capsule rexis with the consequences. You may have iris prolapse leading to iris chaffing. PCR is common, nucleus drop, and definitely you have a lot of iris handling leading to AC reaction. So that is the reason why we are interested in people with small pupil. Now, topical drops work up to a time, then you can have cohesive viscoelastics, or then you can stretch the pupil. But all these things are, in to extent, they work to up to extent. There, is, there are situations where nothing works, then you need to have a, either an iris hook or a, a pupillary expansion devices. Now, Iris hooks, they're ubiquitous, ubiquitous. Everywhere it is available, very, very cheap, 200 to 300 rupees for a set of iris hooks. And no extra instruments are required. Whereas most of the expansion devices, you have to plan for them. Every OT doesn't have it. It is not readily available. They are relatively expensive compared to iris hooks. And you need special devices, either an injector or a forceps, for most of the expansion devices. Now, few, di few things you have to know. You need to have corneal clarity for putting in a, a device which is a pupillary expansion device. If you have corneal opacities, definitely it will be difficult to put in a uh, or manipulate a pupil expansion device. Again, when you have shallow AC, probably both the situations don't work well. However, you may go in for an expansion device because either way, when you put in a iris hook, you make multiple incisions, there is definitely going to be wound leak. So this is, again, you should note, these are the pre-op factors you have to keep in mind when you're planning either of the two things. Then what is the need for dilatation? Sometimes we have a central corneal opacity. We need to shift the focus away or the pupil away from the center. That is the place probably you will prefer a iris hook rather than a pupillary expansion device. Patients who are prone to ocular inflammation, a, a expansion device probably will be better because iris handling is definitely less. And when you have synechia, or rigid pupil, uh, iris hook is definitely better. I'll come to it later on. So intraoperatively, if you have a rigid pupil, it is not dilating. A pupillary expansion device will not give you expansion beyond 5 mm or maybe little more than that. These are the situations where uh, iris hook will work better. When you're having wound leak, already having a wound leak, uh, probably a expansion device will be better because iris hooks either way contribute to wound leak and uh, AC shallowing. So advantage of a RSO is you can selectively isolate a field. I'll come in a video later on. If you have iridodialysis associated with the cataract, a RSO itself will help you hold on to the, uh, the loose iris. It, it, and if you have a subcell, subluxated lens, definitely RSO will help because it'll, it'll help you in giving capsular support also. So whenever you have traumatic cataracts, opacities, a RSO is definitely better. Pupillary expansion device, as I said, will not help in a very rigid pupil. Here, it, it will not give you uh, dilatation beyond 4 mm. And when you have a fixed dilatation, definitely an expansion device will not be helpful. So this is one video. If you see, it's a chronic meteorotic people uh, with uh, pupillary membrane. And if you just see, the first thing you do is you do a select, uh, mechanical stretching of the pupil. I'm not, I'll not go into the whole video. So mechanical stretching can be done by using two Sinsky hooks. But again, it is a rigid pupil, very floppy pupil. And this is the place where if you put in an expansion device, it will not give you much uh, expansion. So better is to use 
multiple iris hooks so that you can expand the pupil very well. But if you see what happens with iris hooks, you, you have multiple entries and this is the risk of post-op inflammation, infection and definitely a wound leak definitely goes up. So this is one case where you can now after iris hooks, you can easily go ahead and do the surgery. A expansion device will not work in a case like this where uh, uh, the pupil is already very rigid. But the risk with iris hooks is you see the iris is elevated. AC becomes shallow. The risk of corneal damage postoperatively is definitely more than a pupillary expansion device. And again, since AC is shallow, there is al uh, always a wound leak. So surgery becomes a little difficult in a scenario like this. So this is another case where you have a central corneal opacity. Now you can't put in a pupillary expansion device here. Ideally speaking, this is a case for triple procedure, but if you're going ahead with a cataract in this, you basically need something to isolate the field away from the central opacity. Now this is a central opacity. If you use iris hooks on the, on the periphery, now this is, we are using the iris hooks and you can, you can see you can easily make space here and you can operate here. So in these scenarios, when you have a opacity, you definitely can't use a pupillary expansion device. The surgery can be done, but in such a scenario, definitely iris hook is any day better. But apart from these two scenarios, most of the times a pupillary expansion device works any day better because of multiple reasons, I'll come to that. Now, when you have an iris hook, you have multiple entries, risk of iris prolapse, iris chafing, post-op infection and inflammation definitely goes up to a very high level. And post-op pupillary deformation is there. People doesn't come back to the normal shape and you have traumatic midriasis, you have uh, later on dysphotopsia as well as glare, which is very, very common. With a pu pupillary expansion device, you definitely have a learning curve. However, a single entry is there. Pupil in the sphincter is definitely spared. So these are the advantages of having a pupillary expansion device. Now, this is another case where you have a pex with a small pupil and a very hard cataract. So what you can do is it is very easy. Through the main wound only, you can just put in a pupillary expansion device. I am a proponent of a BHAX. I no proprietary interest. I love this device because it is so simple and no extra instruments are required and you can easily manipulate. So just put in through your main wound, you put in a BHEX and with a simple intravitreal forcep, you can just put the flanges inside underneath the iris and it gives you a beautiful hexagonal uh, dilatation. And you can easily do any surgery through this uh, uh, device and no extra instruments, no extra this thing and just a lovely dilatation is available with a BHEX very easy to do and, and adequate dilatation is there and you can easily finish off the surgery. And once you finish, finish off the surgery, it is very easy to remove also. You don't have to do anything extra, just pull the uh, uh, BHEX and it, it just comes out. And usually you do it after putting in the eye well. AC is well formed, pupil is, uh, pupil is not deformed, pupil is, and uh, post-op uh, reaction is definitely less. You don't have iris plus, especially in cases of a floppy iris. So that way it is, there is an advantage of using, using a BXC. It is so comfortably, now the pupil will constrict uh, later on. So this is again just, uh, another, another case where you can see the BX is perfectly placed. And even if you have an iris prolapse, like in this case there was iris prolapse, you can easily put the iris back and since there is not much of wound leak, the iris, uh, the uh, pupil, will, uh, the iris will not prolapse again. And after putting the IOL, you can easily remove the BX again. And, and if you see, after removing the BHEX, the pupil definitely comes back, back to its normal position uh, in a uh, BHEX or a pupillary expansion device. So this is another case, just for example, in this case, there is no, uh, uh, pupil is well dilated just to show the advantage of having a iris hook. So once you have the subluxated cataract, after putting the iris hook, you can easily do a cataract surgery in this. So you, if you have a iridodialysis, if you have a, uh, a bag which is subluxated with a small pupil, having iris hook is definitely better than using an expansion device. So points to note is you should always have backup in your OT when you have a small pupil. You should have viscode, you should have expansion devices, capsular support in the form of CTR, and multi-piece IOL you should always have. And thinking ahead, when you evaluate a patient preoperatively, that is the time you need to decide what to do about such cases. So post-operatively, look for all these cases where you put in iris hook or expansion devices, you definitely are going to have chances of raised IOP more with iris hooks and definitely inflammation, again, more with iris hooks. So 
you have to do a SWOT analysis of your technique only. You should know what is what are your surgical skills. Do you have skills to put in expansion device? You should have protocols which are definitely tailored to yourself. Your staff should be trained. You should always have equipment which is ready with you. And ultimately, it is the complacency which leads to complications. So these are the threats you should always anticipate. So no small people should be taken lightly. So in the end, what I would like to conclude is you should need to have a good pre-op workup. That is what decides what to do post-operatively. Speak to the patients. Tell them what you are going to do. Have your own protocol, whether you want to put in a iris hook or you want to put in an expansion device, that you have to decide yourself. Cover all possibilities. And most importantly, pre-operatively advise the patient and post-operatively, you should never hide any complications. And ultimately, decision is yours. As depending on the situation, there is nothing called that this iris hooks can be used in all cases or pupillary expansion devices can be used in all the cases. So ultimately, uh, this is one slide which I show everywhere. Excellence is the art won by training and habituation. We are what we repeatedly do. So basically, excellence then is nothing but a habit. So more you do, more you get used to it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sandeep.